Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. This video, I wanna walk you through using Serato Studio. Now, taking a look at a fresh new DAW could be a really cool way to just kind of step out of the mundane and regular routine that you have when making your music and explore new DAWs can also bring some new life and energy when exploring how to use it and create some new ideas. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the key features that are in Serato Studio and then give you my thoughts at the end. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, at the very beginning of launching Serato Studio, you are introduced with a prompt that gives you the option to start a new beat or a new DJ edit. And this is to understand that Serato Studio is still built from the foundation of Serato itself, which is very DJ oriented. So let's start with creating a new beat. I'm just gonna click this and we're introduced to the layout, the interface here. So just a couple core things. And what I like to do when even starting or using any new DAW is I like to gravitate towards some of the features that are pretty much common thread or commonly found on other uh, digital audio workstations or even drum machines. So we've got our BPN up here in the top left corner, the key signature that we are in, uh, minor or major. And this is really beneficial and helpful because this actually gives you the ability to set the key uh, that of the project that you're working in. So if you were to implement any other samples or any instruments, it would actually adjust and give you the notes to play that belong in that key. So pretty helpful. And then you have some of the other tools here, such as the metronome, so we can keep in time uh, with the tempo that we're trying to record in. And then there's two views here. You have your mix, uh, which gives you the ability to actually adjust the audio, both for the individual sounds and the overall track and then an effects uh, button that allows you to specifically focus in on specific effects that you would like to add to sounds or individual tracks as a whole. All right, and then we have a grid here. Pretty straightforward. This is a uh, grid that you're able to just kind of draw in and click, uh, click in the value, the note value in which that sound will be heard. So just off the bat, just kind of preview some of these sounds. So there's a standard stock sound and all of these are correlating to the sounds that you can find here. So if I wanted to adjust maybe the attack of that, you can do that here, as well as the release of that sample. Flip and reverse, set it to monophonic or polyphonic, uh, adjust any of the tempo, and maybe transpose the, the pitch of that sample here. So that will correlate to the sounds that you see on the grid. So if we just went ahead and go ahead and click and drew on our grid just by hitting the play button, I'll go ahead and take the metronome off. And it's pretty straightforward. You can simply just draw in your pattern. You can also right click and fill in. So let's say we want the hi-hat to fill in at every eighth note. Let's go ahead and remove that just by clicking. I'll do the same thing for the, the closed hi-hat. And just draw in a snare on the two and four. So pretty straightforward. Now they also give you some options just to hit the ground running with um, some already preset uh, rhythmic templates or patterns that you could use. So if you click this, you can go ahead and choose, well, let's go ahead and see um, a hip hop slash rap pattern. Click this and click it again, and it will randomly go through some of the, the cycle presets and display that on the grid already. Now, keep in mind though, when you do cycle through these, being that they are genre specific, you wanna also migrate the tempo that would most likely be uh, surrounding that genre of, uh, of, of or style. So in this case, hip hop rap, we might wanna lower this, uh, double click this and type in, let's say 95 BPMs. And let's click that to, there you go. So you can see, you can cycle through a bunch of them. And so you can kind of just go through a couple of these. We've got indie rock and R&B, trap. Let's go ahead and put trap. And let's go back to the tempo and maybe type in 145 BPMs. So there you go. And then you have the ability to adjust or add swing to this grid. just by turning up. And if we wanted to double the grid amount, we can just hit this here and that will double that as, uh, you know, 
uh, as much as you want here. So we have the one through two and then three through four. And if you added more here, uh, you have the different bars. So you have bars one and two, bars three and four, bars five and six, and bars seven and eight. So this is an eight bar pattern here. So here we have a basic eight bar pattern. And now what we're gonna do is go to the close hi-hat and fill in every eighth note. But now what we can do is add some little intricacies between some of these notes here. So we'll click the grid button and then we can hit times two and that'll allow us to draw in some extra notes between the subdivision of each eighth note. And we can add the triplet as well. Add that right there. So it's cool. Now what I would like to do is change up some of the sounds that we're currently using to create this sequence of this beat. So let's head over to our drums tab here on the lower left-hand corner and browse through some of the sounds. I like that. So I'm going to click, drag that over to the snare. So now when we input the snare value here in the grid, it'll just play that sound. So let's put that right here. And right there. And let's edit that clap sample so that we don't have such a long tail of the end sample. So just by clicking on the sample itself here, we can determine the starting and the ending position of the sample. So the top little bracket you see here indicates the beginning of the sample, where it's starting from, and then the bottom indicates where it's ending. So I'll just click this here. And then we have a shorter clap. And then we won't have any more of that tail going on when we play the pattern. And then we can adjust the volume of that specific sample. On the left side here, we have the volume knob. So if I wanted to lower the clap, we would just adjust this here. We also have some parameters, pretty basic and straightforward. We have the gain, some highs, mids, lows, and a filter. So it can filter the clap sample a little bit. And then we'll bring up the volume. So with the beat in place, let's go ahead and add some samples to this. So we'll go right back to the bottom left-hand corner and click the audio samples tab. That's cool. We can just click and drag that now into our scene. And so you can see here we have the beat that we created on the grid, the clean 808 drum kit, and then we have this new sample that we've just incorporated. So if we want to implement the sample, we can go ahead and just draw it in the grid. So I would have to go in here and adjust this. If I wanted to play at the same tempo that we're currently at, this sample is uh, originally at 160. So I think it's actually just playing twice as fast to get it at 145. Let's just play it twice as slow. I mean, there you go. And we'll lower the volume here. Now, what's cool is the way Serato normally works in the DJ perspective is that you can trigger this and then go ahead and hit each individual slot or cue point as to where you want that specific cue point to start in this sample. So if we, let's say, hit the cue point here, I can click all these individual cue points, we can trigger different places in the actual sample. So let's say this cue point here, let's play it. And this one can be just as fast, uh, twice as fast. So now we can go ahead in the grid, as you can see, when we created those individual cue points, they show up here in our grid. So now we can just sequence a pattern using those individual cues. And then we can stretch them out. And then we'll go ahead and, and stretch this out later. So this is uh, slice two, and I can go to the cue point two here and play that twice as slow or one more time. And we could reverse it and we can actually change the key for that specific cue point. So we'll go three semitones up. And then this one, we'll put a filter on it. 
and just lower the volume of that specific cue point. We'll just extend that there. That actually works better than having these two elements here. So let's just go ahead and play this sample straight from the beginning. So let's add a baseline to this current beat that we're working on. But before we do, I want to highlight a couple of things. Going back to this cue or the sample, remember that we shifted the key signature, we pitch shifted this by three semitones up. So if we go back down to zero, the natural state of the sample, the natural key signature, we look on the top, we notice that it's C minor. C minor is the natural state of the sample. Now you can hit the sync button here on the top right hand corner, and this will sync the sample so that when you shift keys on the top, it will shift this sample as well. As well as all any other samples or instrumentations that you incorporate in this current project. So if we go back to C minor and we hit the unsync button, you can individually change the key of each sample. So you can do it here. You can also do it here so that it tells you this key signature that you're in, which is a lot more helpful than just shifting the key. Because now you know that this cue is an A minor because we went three semitones down. So as you incorporate maybe instruments or other samples, you want to focus in knowing that the samples should follow in the A minor key signature. So let's just leave it at C minor, hit sync. We'll leave it at C minor there, and let's add our baseline. So we're going to click our instruments tab, cycle through some of the categories. We'll hit bass, Atlanta, and drag and drop that in there. Now, the reason why I took time to highlight the keys, because as you can see here, we have all the notes that belong in the key that we're currently in, C minor. So if we hit the play and key button, then you have a chromatic uh, piano roll. So you can choose any notes that you want to play. But if you want to hit play and key, now the notes that you choose to sequence or draw in will fit the key signature that you're working on. So this is really helpful, especially for those who are just getting started and getting familiar with uh, what notes are going to really sit well with samples that you might incorporate or use in your projects. This is a really helpful tool to kind of just hit the ground running and just time in with more of the patterns and the phrasing that's going to really make sense. So we can just click and draw in our notes and draw another one here because we know that these notes already fit well within the key that we're in. And we can now go a whole octave higher shift that over and extend that so we can get a little bit of glide from this note to this one here because we have our glide slide, um, knob turned up slightly. And add another one here. Right there. There you go. There you go. Now, let's say for the intro, we want to just start off with that sample that we were tweaking. So what we're going to do is we're going to create basic different scenes. Maybe this will be our intro beat. We'll just have the sample and then we can go into our verse beat, which will incorporate just the sample and the beat. And maybe we'll have like our chorus with the sample beat and the 808 bass drum. So let's go ahead and click this next scene right alongside the intro and hit copy. And that's going to copy all the patterns that we've currently created. That is the baseline, the sample, and the 808 drums. So now we can head over to our intro scene and just clear or take out the elements we don't want. So we'll clear the drums and we'll go over here and clear this as well. So all the only thing that's playing right now is the sample. And then when we go to scene two, All right, so let's rename this and say all in. So it's everything in there. So now let's kind of format this in some kind of arrangement that will make sense. So we can hit our song view here, and now we can go ahead and drag and drop our intro and play that for as long as we'd like. So we'll hit the 
back to the beginning button and play the song. And let's say we want another round of that. And then bring in all in beat here, which will have the beat, the bass line, and the sample included. Let's take it from the beginning. continue that all in beat. So we'll do that. What I like is that you can actually see the waveform being uh, drawn out here, which is pretty cool. And so one thing to keep in mind throughout all of this is that it is built on Serato's DJ platform. So we can head to our library, go to our Serato DJ library, and actually implement audio that we might have in our iTunes library or any files and songs that we might have lying around on our hard drive. So I can click that and drag and drop that into the project that we're in, the current scene that we're in. And as you can see here, the key signature that we're in is C minor, and the key signature that the sample was in by Serato's detection is in C sharp minor. So it synced this sample and it brought it down one semitone. So that means that the sample, if I drew it in, will fit the key that we're working in. And then we can draw in different parts of. So right here, we can just draw in, you know, particular parts of whatever cue point that we assigned for that sample. So it's pretty cool. And it's just easy to really hit the ground running, knowing that Serato is going to identify the key and make sure that all the samples and loops and even the instruments that you're going to be using are focusing on the key signature. So that probably takes a lot of the burden and stress away for those who don't wanna get hung up on that um, stuff and then could just focus in on, you know, putting cool sounds together, making the patterns and the beats that they wanna work on and just have that at the forefront of their workflow. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and inspiring to check out Serato Studio. I personally think it's a great entry point for those of you who are just getting started with making music or wanting to learning how to craft your own beats and have everything kind of fit in the right place, I think it's a good place to start. So explore it. You can visit the Serato website for more information or just visit the link below in the description box. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.